is so good. Hallelujah. Oh, he is not finished yet. We give you the praise. Oh, why don't you lift up your hands?
praise him. God is so good. Oh, one more time, can we just praise Him? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. when you open a door no devil in hell can shut it hallelujah God when you give a word nothing can make that stop in the name of Jesus the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah we're going to do something a little out of the norm here today at our guests, if you're a guest here today, first of all, we're so glad you're here. Thank you for being here. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We've announced this as Celebration Sunday, celebrating what God has done, what God is doing, what God is getting ready to do. Amen. I feel a lot of faith in this place right now. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to start out with a couple of announcements that I think you will very much enjoy. You may be seated. If you're a guest here today, uh, please just put up with us for a little bit. We don't normally do this. My wife says, uh, maybe I'm a little too streamlined sometimes, but I like to start church and let it run wide open. And then when, when we all wore out, then we do the announcements. Amen. <laughs> I don't like to stop, but we need to do this today. We need to talk about some things that God has done and blessings. And so I've asked uh, a couple of our ministry teams if they would just make some announcements. Our children's ministry is going to come and tell us something very exciting today. Praise the Lord. I'm so excited for this announcement. Um, you know, we know that God's not finished yet, and so we're very excited as the Sunday School team to be bringing this forward. So next week, on April 2nd, we are going to introduce a new thing for our Blast Zone group, and it's going to be Kids Fellowship. So all of you lovely people who have children, when you head downstairs to enjoy your coffee and your snacks, instead of worrying about where your little ones are going to be, what they're going to be doing, are they running around, are they getting themselves in trouble, instead, you're going to happily send them off to the Blast Zone classroom, and we are going to be hitting three points when they come to us. It's going to be a 30-minute run, but we're going to hit three points. We're going to have the Word of God, we're going to have games, and snacks, of course. We can't leave out snacks. So we're really, really excited for that. This is going to be geared and aimed at our group that is about five to ten years old. They'll meet over there, and we're going to have an exceptional time. We're so excited for this. And again, that's going to be starting next week on April 2nd, and it's going to be happening about twice a month. So just listen for that. As Erica is dismissing us from church, she'll let you know when those are happening and to just send your kids right on over there so they can get the Word of God for themselves. All right. Good morning, Life Point Church. If you guys don't know me, oh my goodness, everybody loves me so much. If you guys don't know, my name's Justin. I am the youth leader here at Life Point Church. Uh, me and Lisa coordinate the uh, youth group here. And uh, recently, uh, we've kind of just wanted to give our youth the opportunity to be able to explore new opportunities with music and instruments and things of that sort. So we kind of put a whole bunch of instruments that I had way too many of in the uh, youth room so that they could have full access and be able to explore and, and maybe find something or see a hidden talent in themselves that they didn't see before. Well, it's gone over so well that I wanted to open it up to our congregation here at LifePoint. 
So this is going to be every week, but we do want to open it up to everybody who wants to come out and hang out. We're going to call it our jam session. And uh, we're going to have our first one April 26th. So if you have uh, an instrument or you like to play or maybe you like to sing or you have some type of interest in music at all, come hang out with us April 26th to have a nice little jam session. Who knows? We might find some hidden talent here at LifePoint Church. Thank you. excited about these new plans and new ideas. Amen. I'll tell you what else I'm excited about. I'm excited about what God has been doing over the last three or four months here. And uh, instead of trying to put a number on it, and I know they're not all here, but if you have been baptized in Jesus' name since December, let's call it from December forward, would you stand? <laughs> oh, let's see. That's amazing. God bless you. God bless you. You may be seated. God is good. Amen. We had we had children standing all over the place. On top of all of that, I, I love it when God touches a child. I love it when God fills a child with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I was baptized at nine years old a long time ago. Back many scrolls on the computer. <laughs> so you know what I'm talking about, some of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm a 70s baby. It's filled with the Holy Ghost at the age of 12. I can't say that I've never stumbled, I've never fell, but I've never looked back. This is the life. This is the life. And for all of our children that have been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, there's nothing in the world that you need. It's all right here in the house of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So exciting. Oh, We are going to give a little presentation today, and I said this is going to take a little while, but I think it needs to be done, so just, just bear with us. I promise to preach extra long to make up for it. Amen. But <clears throat> some of you are, are relatively new and don't even know what this building looked like when we started. And you know, we're sitting in a miracle. We're right in the middle of a miracle. And um, <laughs> the step we celebrate today was started by the most unusual situation, yet always within the grasp of God. And if you're in a situation right now that you said, this looks like everything is working against me, and this cannot possibly be for good, just let God do what God does. Just let God do what God does. I can remember in the old building, standing on that second floor foyer, looking out that big arch window, praying over the situation next door. God, you know I don't want this to happen. You know that this is not what I think is good for this community or this church. But God, I trust you, and I believe you're going to do something, and do something he did. Amen. God moved us into this place, blessed us tremendously, gave us this beautiful building, added so many people. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> In December 2019, we purchased this building. Uh, Brother Eli, could you turn around and adjust that fan so that it's on low. Um, we purchased this building to um, begin to lay plans for rehabilitation and repurposing the existing structure. The building was erected originally in 1983 as the Noise Museum uh, of Art and functioned as so until about 2014. That's a funny side story, but as I was purchasing tile for this building, I was trying to explain to the sales lady where we were because so many people know where this building is. And I said, we're in the old noise museum. And she just looked at me really oddly, like stunned. And she's a very outspoken lady, very a lot of fun to be around. And finally she looked at me, she said, who, who would make a museum about noise? I said, well, my grandkids would. <laughs> but that's not the kind of noise I'm talking about, amen. 
Fred and Ethel Noyes uh, had a lot to do with kind of getting Smithville started again. Fred and Ethel's Lantern Light Restaurant, the old Smithville Inn, Ram's Head Inn, all built by this family that built this building. And it was built to, to be an art museum and kind of help display Fred's um, decoy collection, as I understand it. But it was then deeded to Stockton College uh, for a nominal sum, just kind of a transfer dollar sum. And the college held the property for about five years trying to sell it, but it just kept getting more and more in disrepair. And after many attempts to sell it, that fell through because God knew what we were going to need. We bought it in December of 19. Amen. Since that time, so much work and effort has been put into this building by so many people. Thank you for your work, your talents, your efforts in making this beautiful building our church. Thank you. Thank you, Life Point Church. <clears throat> Another sidebar, but I cannot gloss over this. We had a work day yesterday. And I guess in a lot of churches, that's the big dread day of the year. But around here, it seems to be the best day. And we had a small army converged on the building. And uh, we did all of the landscaping prep for spring and remulched and cleaned the whole building from top to bottom. And uh, I kept thinking it was, you know, I always think it's lunchtime. But I, I, was, I was thinking, man, it's got to be lunchtime. And it was only an hour. We, had, we did a whole day's work in about two hours just blew it out and thank you again for coming through life point church for those of you that could make it thank you so much many of you did not see what we started with and after years of no use the building was in disrepair the grounds were in a heavy state of overgrowth some of you remember that that worked on that and with the grace of god and good old hard labor we established ourselves as a thriving church in the township of Galloway, New Jersey. And I'm just going to, we just put together a slideshow kind of showing from beginning to where we are today and the progress of the building. So just enjoy it. It's going to be a few minutes, but just enjoy it and um, see what God has done. If they could start that, please.
Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Somebody praise him. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all of you who were here to help with this and push this over the top. What a beautiful place we have. What a blessed people we are. Amen. God has brought us this far. That, that second song was just, we could have just sang that for the whole presentation. God is not finished yet. Amen. God is not finished yet. We are ready to begin the new building, which will go out in this side parking lot. If you go past the children's wing, you kind of have to sidestep around the nursery right now, but that will be a hallway that runs straight through the double doors that goes into the new sanctuary that will go in that little side parking lot where my truck is usually parked on Sunday mornings. And I am so excited about this. Um, I just, I am ready. I am ready to see it happen. Amen. Do you know what that means? We need to raise funds. Amen. We need to raise some funds. And if God has blessed you through this church, if you have grown spiritually, if your children are taken care of, if your youth are ministered to, if God has helped you and touched you in any way, I'm asking you to please get engaged and get involved with what we're doing in the work of God. We are ready to begin moving forward with our new sanctuary space. As you can tell, it is needed. And uh, <laughs> amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to need everybody to help as much as possible. And obviously our greatest need at the immediate uh, moment is funding. And, and I know this is a giving church. You all have given and given. And I'm, I'm asking you to search your hearts to reach beyond your normal response and let faith take hold of your mind. Again, to our guests, I apologize. Um, Please don't feel that this is aimed at you in any way. We're glad you're here, and we'll get back to church in just a minute. But we've got to do this because we need to continue to grow, and it's how it works. Um, I I know I'm good-looking, but they will not give me lumber based on that. (laughs) I tried, and it just didn't work. So... They want, they want cash on the counter, and uh, that's how it happens. Now, I know we're all aware that times are tough, but please remember, this was not my idea. This is not pastor's dream. This is God's vision. I, it's not my fault he started this whole thing in the middle of a pandemic. You, you think I didn't step back and ask God a couple times, really, God? No, I got two churches. I can't have church in either one of them. We couldn't even go into our church, and I'm building another one. Lord, this doesn't make any sense. God, just just do what I told you to do. Don't tell me about it. Just, <laughs> And that's where we are. We could say, well, it's high, and things are expensive, and groceries are high, and gas is high, and, and it is. But God always figures that out. He, he's got all that worked out, and if we just take a step of faith, then we get blessed. That's how it works. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm really not, I'm asking you to sacrifice. I am, because God is asking us to do this. But in all reality, it never comes out that way. When we give, he gives it back, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. It's it's the best way to be blessed is to bless. And so when we begin to bless God and bless the kingdom of God, and we begin to provide a provision for people to be able to come in and get the Holy Ghost and continue to grow. And when the sanctuary is going to be big enough, we can have the baptismal in the sanctuary again, which I'm very much looking forward to that. And all these things that will be added, and God is doing an incredible thing, but he's just looking to give you an opportunity to trust him. And when you trust him, then he trusts you more and more and more. I have another exciting announcement to make. Are you ready? We have an anonymous donor who is committed to match 
everything given to this building fund for this effort in this campaign per dollar, dollar for dollar, up to $100,000. Jesus. <clears throat> what that means is if you give a dollar, they give a dollar. If you commit to giving $5,000, so do they. If you commit to giving $20,000, so do they. You say, oh, pastor, come on, really? I don't know. Somebody's given 100 God can do whatever he wants to do. And when we take a step of faith and say, okay, God, if, if I make this pledge, I believe you're going to provide it, and then we follow through with it, that's how it works. That's how we got here. That's how we got the old building. That's how it moved from the first move to the, from the first place to the second move and to the third and then now the fourth. God has just been with this church all the way through, starting in a little tiny building. And now look what God has done. Amen. Yes, it takes faith, but God has never failed us. Never. Never. If you trust God with this effort, he will bless you. And he will use this for our kingdom. And having said all that, our goal, our goal is $250,000. I got a lot of, hmm. The pastor has lost his mind. The pastor knows what it costs. Man, we are doing everything we can to save as much as we can. Don't take this wrong. This is, this is not about me. It is about the church. But just me functioning as the general contractor has already saved this church about $150,000. We're doing everything we can to get it across the line. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to call our worship team back up. And we're going to sing another song. Would you stand with me right now? Hallelujah. I want us to pray right now that God would touch our hearts and minds in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are honored and privileged to be asked to do this. And we ask you, God, to touch us. Lord Jesus, to let faith come in our lives right now. God, to let faith come in our spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you would help us to see past our means, past our abilities. God, you could put your thoughts in our mind, your thoughts in our hearts, and trust us, God, to do your will and your way. Lord, I pray over this congregation as we begin to take this next step of faith together. Lord, we've been through some crazy things together. God, but we're going to get this done because you're not finished and we're not going alone and we're not doing it by ourselves. And this is not depending on our talent, our wisdom, our skill, or even our money. This is depending on you, God, and your miracle working power to multiply what needs to be multiplied. If you can take a lunch, a boy's lunch of a couple of fish and just a few loaves and feed thousands, then you could take our giving and turn it into the greatest revival that this county has ever seen in its existence. In the name of Jesus, I pray in faith right now that you would get a hold of our hearts. God, get a hold of our minds and let us trust you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is what I want to do. We did this before. This is nothing new, but I have pledge cards here. There's no place for a name. I don't need to know who pledged it. I trust the pledge. I've asked Brother Rick if he would come. Brother Mike Black, would you come? Would you stand up front here? You take half. Give half to Mike. And as we sing this song and we worship, I want you to worship and praise. Amen. The service is not over. But if you would, if you feel led to come, nobody's going to know how much you write on there, even after you write it and turn it in. Amen. But if you would just come and take a pledge card and fill that out today, if you just need a week, then take a week. But by next week, I want to get these turned in so we know what we have. As we worship, would you come and take a pledge card? One per family, in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. I feel like God is just doing something in our hearts right now. Hallelujah. Jesus, I love you. I love you, Lord. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you. Just a point of clarification. Sometimes I forget to say everything, and it's important that this pledge card, we're looking to get that turned in, but it does not mean you have to turn all of the funds in by next week. Um, the pledge card says that it's a year. and You can do it in, in chunks. You can do it monthly. There's a place online, if you give online, that you can mark building fund. There's white envelopes out on that little table in the foyer that you can put on there and mark that building fund just so that we know what it's for. Amen. <clears throat> and, of course, you'll have something for your taxes at the end of the year. But just so everybody understands, um, there's still some more. We'll put them out on the table. If you didn't want to come up and you want to take one, they'll be, they'll be available. But I believe what we need is in this room because I serve a God that's incredible, that's a provider. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Well, usually I'm wrapping up right now, <clears throat> but I'm just starting, so it's okay. At the end of church, we have cupcakes and we have donuts, and they're all free, so part of the celebration. So if you'll let me preach a little bit, I'll give you a cupcake. Amen. Luke 15, and verse 8. Either what woman having ten pieces of silver... If she loses one piece, does not light a candle, sweep the house, and seek diligently till she find it. And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice for me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of angels of God over one sinner that repents. That's what excites God. Hallelujah. Jesus, I ask, Lord, that you would anoint me, that you would anoint this congregation, that you would touch us, God, in a very special way. Let us hear your word and apply it to our life and be changed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, before you sit down, everybody just take a quick look around at everybody around you real quick. Then I'll explain what you're looking at. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Welcome to God's lost and found department. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, we were all like, like the lost coin. But unlike the world's mentality of, oh, well, there are nine more, God's heart searched, swept, and sought until he found us. I'm glad we serve a God that cares enough to come after me when I'm lost. I'm glad I serve a God that reaches for me, amen, when I fall down. Hallelujah. When you were born, you were important to God. Regardless of individual circumstances, you are important to God. Sometimes we go through hard times and difficult things and we, we can very quickly count ourselves out as we must be at the bottom rung or something that God doesn't love me anymore because this has happened to me and nothing can be further than the truth. I've got some time in this. I've been in church since I've pretty much been in first grade. I've been pastoring for 25 years, been ministering for almost 35. And I can tell you this, the harder the time, the closer God gets. The exact opposite of what the devil will tell you, that God is for, that he's abandoned you, is not true. We go through hard times. We develop in those times when we draw closer to the king of kings. And if you're facing something today and you don't know how to handle it, just get closer to God and he'll help you through that process. Amen. Some of us say, well, I wasn't lost. I knew exactly where I was going. And to that I say, many are lost and don't know it. 
you know, we men, we have this reputation. I'm not sure exactly where it came from because I am impatient. I'm sorry, but I'm impatient. And I refuse to wander aimlessly when I can get directions and get there. That's just my nature. But as a whole, I understand that men struggle with stopping and asking for directions, which is kind of going by the wayside since Siri and Google and everybody else on our phone tells us exactly where to go, where to turn. Amen. It's no longer the days of trying to figure out how to fold the map or stop at a gas station and ask for directions. How many are old enough to remember doing that? Yes. Okay. Amen. (coughs) So... (laughs) sometimes people are lost and they don't know it. They won't admit it. They're driving. They pick up the speed. You know, when you're lost, you go faster. You just get lost faster. (laughs) But we live like this in the world. And we think, well, if I just get a little more money, if I get another promotion, if I add another job, if I get a little more pressure, all we're doing is getting deeper and deeper in trouble. Until finally what we say, right? We say, well, we finally hit bottom. A good percentage of people in this church came to this church because you hit the bottom. We hit the bottom and we don't know what else to do. And now we have to realize, we have to face the fact, I am lost. People say, well, people that don't know they're lost compared to people that know they're lost. Who is the most lost? I think the people that don't know they're lost are the most. Because the guy that hit the bottom or the lady that hit the bottom and they... I'm lost. Well, you're just one step from being found now. Right? We can look at our life and say, man, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. This is a mess. I, I, I can't fix this. No, you can't. But he can. And he will. And he wants to. And he can today. He can touch us today. Scripture tells us this parable or life story about a woman who had lost her coin. Now, on the surface, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal. It could be a valuable coin, right? But we go back automatically to there's nine more. There's ten, and she lost one. What is, what is the big panic? But there's a deeper core of that, that we need to understand here that goes along with Jewish tradition, that this, these coins represented her dowry. And without that coin... Her getting married was going to be just that much more difficult, if not impossible. She did not have a complete dowry. Now, I know that doesn't make sense to us today, but in this day, it made perfect sense. When Jesus was telling the story, they all knew exactly what he was talking about. This single, one single coin was of very high value to her as it represented her life, her future life with a husband. Now, the world's attitude is very similar to Satan's in that, who who cares? Isn't that the overall sense that we get today? Who cares? I don't care if you like me or not. I don't care what I look like. I don't care what I act like. I don't care what I sound like. I don't care what language I, you know, bad language I use. I'm not talking about cultural now. I'm talking about things that people say and stuff that goes on that, you know, in times past you just didn't. You didn't experience that. You didn't run into that. And that seems to be the world's mentality. Well, Satan doesn't care, right? And it gets a hold of people. This is a hard thing to say, but, you know, I can go to hell any way I want according to Satan. Who cares? But then Jesus comes along and says, there's one way to heaven. And our immediate response is, hmm, that's restrictive. I, come on, now, we've all dealt with it a time or two. Put me in a box. I, I want to go wherever I want to go. I want to do whatever I want to do. And that brings a product. The Bible tells us the wages or the product of sin is death. Right? But the gift of God is eternal life. So God cares when we're lost. God cares that we need to be found. God cares enough to say this is the way because if I'm depending on it, I want to know where it is. I want to know exactly where that path is. I want to know exactly where those boundaries are so that I can be saved. I can be found. I don't have to be lost. I have a couple of times 
I'm a little bit adventurous. And uh, I'll just, just go drive somewhere I've never been and just see where I show up. Where does this come out? Never been on this road. Take it. Let's see. That's just kind of me. That's when I'm not being impatient. Amen. <laughs> Typically, the parkway is my way. <laughs> Amen. I know exactly how. No, I'm not going to say that because they'll change it. But I know exactly how fast I can go and get away with it. Amen. <clears throat> I said it. <clears throat> but <clears throat> sometimes I just like to get off the beaten path and go places that I've never been and see things that I've, I've never seen and just kind of figure out what's going on here. But after a while, and especially if it's unintended, and, you, and especially if you're trying to get someplace in particular, that gets old. Because you, you just, okay, but where am I going to end up? Where, where am I going to go? And this whole thing that starts out, it sounds like it's so much fun. It sounds like this is the better way. It is it's such a more broad way that I can do whatever I want, live however I want, and just whatever. That's the attitude. But then we get to a place in our life where that's not working anymore. Because we're tired of whatever because then it bleeds over into our family and it bleeds over into our children if we have children and then it can bleed over into our grandchildren if they have children and all of a sudden we realize there's a whole lifestyle of whatever but there's no direction, there's no clarity, there's no safety. But Jesus provides that when he finds us, uh, he puts us on that path. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he that is going to go to the spiritual things is going to go through me. I am that door. And so Jesus becomes that place of safety for us and that place of being found. Huh. You know, this woman was, was not casual about the loss of one coin, and Jesus is not casual about the loss of one soul. He calls the church his bride. And if you really want to tie this all together, we can do that with this same story and the core meaning because we're not complete if we're lost. Jesus is going to take a complete bride, a pure bride, a washed bride, a clean bride, a whole bride. I want to be part of that. To be part of that, I've got to be found. Amen. He fully invested in this relationship. He very much wants to be your God. He very much wants to be your Savior. He wants to be your healer. He wants to be your deliverer. He wants to be your, your everything. He doesn't care where you've been. He does not care what you've done, how you did it. His power his blood that was shed on Calvary is strong enough to cover. It is strong enough to cover anything, any sin, any stain that has been left on our life. Uh, we were celebrating those who have been baptized in Jesus' name. And somebody says, well, what's the big deal about that? I'll tell you what the big deal is. Because this church preaches the Bible. And the Bible says that when we're baptized, our sins are washed away. It's not just something we do because we're going to church. It actually does something to us. We start over. We baptize young children that don't really have a whole lot on their record yet. We've baptized people that are in their 80s and they've got a whole life on their record yet. And the blood of Jesus has never been stumped. It's never tripped up and said, oh, I can't. I can't cover that because nothing is stronger than the blood of Jesus Christ. Nothing is stronger than baptism washing away your sins. Hallelujah. You don't have to be lost. You can be found. You can be found. Have you ever lost something that you really didn't want to lose? You know, um, I, I got this new wallet about six months ago. It's one of them little metal wallets. And, you know, you put it in your front pocket and it holds four or five cards or whatever and that's about it it's got a little money clip didn't never have any money but it's got the money clip and uh <laughs> some of you thought that was a belt clip didn't you <laughs> amen i have lost that thing so many times i don't know if it's just because it's different or it doesn't go in my back pocket and just stay there or i take it out and i set it on things and and then when you lose that it gets exciting Right, Because you have ID, there's all kinds of things that are involved, and we start thinking about how much work it's going to be to shut everything down and start everything over, right? It's kind of crazy how we think today. Everything relates to work. Oh, do you know how much work that's going to be? 
We know they ain't going to steal us, steal anything, because we don't have anything. But it's a lot of work, right? <laughs> and we, we, we get this place where we kind of get panicky. Or we've lost our keys and we've got to go. That's an awful feeling. Where are my keys? You know, I find my keys in a lot of places. When I have them, I know where they're going. When somebody else takes them, not always the case. <laughs> Honey, I wasn't just talking about you. You should have just been quiet. Amen. <laughs> I had to get my keys out of my daughter's purse today, amen, because my car is like the local whoever needs it car, amen, but you get panicky, like I'm ready to go out the door, and oh man, where are my keys, Uh, who's got them somewhere locked away in the bedroom, and I can't get to them, we get panicky, because we don't want things to be lost, amen, when we're, when we're not with God, God, God gets a little uh, upset, God is not going to just sit around and hope that it works out, God's going to be involved, God's going to have his hand on you, God is going to direct you the best that he can to bring you home. God wants to guide you into a place of safety. I can't say God gets panicky, but God is involved. God is engaged. Luke 15, 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. And divided unto them his living. In case you can't sort that out. He just asked his dad for the inheritance that he was going to receive when he died, before he died. That's pretty bold. Hey, Dad, I know you're going to die some, someday, so whatever you're going to give me then, could you give it to me now? Wow. We do some crazy stuff. We ask some crazy things of God. For 13, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land and began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he set him in his fields to feed the pigs. And when he would have fainted, have it filled with belly with the husks that the pigs did eat, and no man gave unto him. Somebody said, this guy was in a bad way. And when he came to himself, when he hit bottom, when he hit the wall, he said, how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to spare, and I am going to die for hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of your hired servants. Some may say humility and repentance. Humility and repentance will always take you home. When we stop being proud... And we ask for help. It is always there. I want to I want to let that sink in. When we stop running, wherever it is that God has to take us, but we stop running and we say, I need Jesus. He is not a long journey away. And he arose and he came to his father. But while he was a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and hugged him and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven in thy sight. I am no more worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his hand. Give him the power back uh, and shoes on his feet. uh, And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Hallelujah. Now, I've taken a lot of time today, and I'm not going to take time to tear this all apart and and talk about every nuance of this parable, but instead, I want to go to the bottom line, which is the most important. If we have fallen away from God, he wants us back, period. Period. 
I said, if we have drifted away from God, he is calling us back today. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, let me say this. Uh, so does this church. Hallelujah. I said, so does this church. Uh, if people... Hallelujah. Brother Dion, if you would come. I've, I've got to make this clear, but <clears throat> sometimes when we get away from God, we backslide, we call it. We get away from the things of God, we get confused or whatever it is that happens because we're fragile human beings. Sometimes the greatest thing to overcome in our minds is not, will God take me back, but will the church take me back? And I am here to stay, say this, the church wants you back. Mama wants you back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for second chances. Thank God for second chances. You know, this referred to him being in a pig pen, and not every pig pen looks the same to everybody else, but all means the same thing lost. Some pig pens look rich, some look popular, some look intelligent, some look fancy, some look like addiction, some look like depression, some look like frustration, but they all have the same result, lost without a reason. There is no reason to be lost because Jesus is simply a turn away. Just that acknowledgement and repentance, God, I'm not... I'm not doing that anymore, not going that way anymore. And then Jesus is right there. A spirit of humility will take you home. The spirit of repentance will bring you back to the Father. And if I've known anything in my life, I know that the Father is waiting for you to turn toward home. He is waiting to see your heart turn and He will run to you. God is speaking today to those who are lost, those who know it and those who don't know it. He is interested in you today. You're not just another number, another person with a problem, but you are His child and He wants you. He wants you to be saved. Can we begin to praise him right now all over this building? Hallelujah. Can we begin to worship him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. I love you, Jesus. If you found yourself today realizing, if you found yourself today realizing that you're lost. Maybe you came here today, you know you're looking for something, but you don't know what it was, but it's Jesus. You say, why? Well, I've, been, I've been in trouble. I don't know how to get out of it. I don't know what to do. It's okay. It's all right. You've arrived at God's lost and found department. And you were lost, but now you're found. But the blind man said, yeah, what, how did it do it? What did he say? Exactly what happened? He said, I don't know all the details. All I know is that I was blind, but now I see. It's just a bottom line, church, uh, that we can be saved. Uh, would, you, would you pray to him right now? This altar is open if you want to come, but find somebody to pray with all through this congregation and let God move in this place. Just reach out to God right now. Reach out to Him.
to wait. My heart needs a surgeon. My soul needs a friend. So I run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 again and again. Oh, oh, oh. Just as I am, 
to the Father right now again and again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's worship him together. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. A Sunday worth celebrating, wasn't it? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done in this church. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I think the thing that I love about that is that covered, that slideshow covered December 2019 to December uh, to March 2023. It covered that sp- period of time for the building. Didn't say anything about the individual lives that have changed and people who were coming now that didn't know Jesus before this point, people who knew Jesus then that know him better now. There's so much more that's changed than just a building. And he's not finished. He's not finished. Amen. He's still doing it. He's a good God. I read something today that I want to share real quick. Getting ready for Easter. Is everybody getting ready for Easter? Getting excited? It says, as you prepare for Resurrection Sunday, remind yourself that God doesn't expect you to grow spiritually on your own. Give yourself permission to come imperfectly before him because it is God's power that is made perfect in your weakness. He's not expecting you to have it all figured out before you walk in and run back to the Father. He's expecting you to come imperfectly and let him heal you because only he can. He's a good God. Just keep running. Just keep running back to the Father. You mess up, run back to the Father. Keep going. That's what matters. All right, I'm getting off that. I'm just the announcements girl, right? <laughs> uh, all right, so if we could throw up those announcements, I, I see lots of people, so hopefully somebody can help me. Awesome. If you want to go to the ladies' lunch and tickets are done, they're, yes, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Sister Gillis, would you like to come? <laughs> oh, that's all right. If you have tickets, now tickets are done being sold. So I can't say go buy them. They're done. But if you bought tickets and you want to carpool, because it is about a two-hour ride from here, we're going to see Sister Paula. Wave your hand. Everybody knows who you are, but still. Um, See her if you would like to carpool, and we're going to figure that out today. Um, Immediately following a delicious lunch and a wonderful Palm Sunday, we're going right into another prayer and fasting for the beginning of April. This will be the third through the fifth nightly prayer meetings here at the church at seven. And that will end in our communion service on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. That's gonna be powerful to have fasted that period. We know how we feel when we come in that 60 minutes of fire service. Now imagine it coming in and doing communion together. That's gonna be powerful. So if you have not done the fasting up until this point, try it this time. Try it for Easter and see what God will do with your life. If you are unable to come on Wednesday nights and you would like to take communion at 11 a.m. on Wednesday, please let pastor know. We have some that cannot drive at night, some whose work schedule stop that from happening. Please talk to pastor personally if you need to come earlier on that Wednesday at 11. Um, You can text him, you can see him now, or you can email him. Easter service at LifePoint is April 9th. Please watch your phones and social media for the, all the information that for the celebrations, including a children's parade this year, which will be so fun. And district youth convention is coming as well. So uh, Brother Justin, Sister Lisa, if your kids want to go to that, they need to know so they can help them get registered. Okay, that was five announcements. That was the first half of April. It's crazy. (laughs) I am so thrilled. There is an event for every single group in this church, and I'm thrilled. There's more coming. We need to make sure we're connected through our contact system, through social media. I did a head count today, and I was still missing. There are 14 people in this building that I don't have contact information for. 
So if you're one of them, let me know. <laughs> we, you should be getting texts and information regarding the events. We do, do, we do sign up sheets. So if you want to be going to something, you have to sign up, which means you have to have the text, which means, okay, <laughs> so let's do this. Please join us for coffee and free snacks after the church service, woohoo, to celebrate. It's like a birthday party. We would love to meet you. If you're a guest here, please stay and make a new friend today. And finally, if you would like to give, you can do so uh, with the usher by the map wall or the QR code on the back if we could stand together. That was a mouthful. <laughs> I feel a little out of breath. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, for your amazing presence, this incredible service, and what you're doing at Life Point Church. We're celebrating you today. Bless our food as we enjoy it and keep us safe and bring us back here next week in Jesus' name. You are dismissed. <laughs>